Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the top Dark Souls bosses as voted upon by Sir So Yeet, the greatest Dark Souls character of all time. Here we go. The first one, Sif, ladies and gentlemen. Last underscore, gray underscore Sif. Oh, he's a big dog with a big sword. He hops around. He swings, but he's not. He's very skilled with the axe. How can you, how can you under check the, the blue blazing sword? He's, he's got the skill to do that jumping around you gotta watch it he's he's like a bucking bronco you make sure you have plenty of estus and just don't stand in front of him i get you give him credit man he's able he, he's got some dial ability he can dance left and right why is he one of the most memorable of all time because look at him he's probably in your backyard right now we can all he's relatable sith loosely translates to relatable <laughs> All right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, never forget the thunder from down under. The minkicity. She's big. She's nasty. But she's memorable, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about none other than Quaylog. Quaylog spits flames, dances from left to right, has got puddles of lava. She's got strategically placed hair over places when you when you fight in her arena you gotta be dialed in she's got a, she's got a long arm of society and man the first time you fight Quaylock, you never forget she's you you wonder where is the morphicity in it you know is, is she riding the spider is she the spider did the spider consume her but when it's all said and done she suffers the same fate as all those who oppose Sir So Yeet. Next up, Kala Yeet. Very, very imposing will with the charcoal like armor on the outside. The stone wings. The carrot pointed nose. I'm not talking about Frosty. I'm talking about the black dragon Kala Yeet. Very difficult. He's got a resin blast. But Sir So Yeet dusts himself off, gets back up there with Harvey's gavel. It, it, you know, when you get up close, here, here's prime strats for Kala Yeet. Wait for your moment, roll. Then you hit him right in the thorax. Once you hit him in the thorax, then you hit him in the Adam's apple. Once you hit him in the Adam's apple, then you finish him off. Why is he memorable? Because he's just a big boy. And big boys are meant to fall hard, ladies and gentlemen. It's good eats. Cali Yeet is a big one. Up next. Oh, look. Maybe the most memorable soundtrack in the entire ball game. He's he's got a resin sword. You know, this is this feels a little bit, you know, I don't want to cross pollinate the video. Feels a little bit like not smelter demon. But the guy before it that you gotta in Dark Souls 2. It, it the, the arena feels the same. I, his name escapes me, but but Gwyn Lord of Cinder. He's got the thickness, but to back it up, he's got the quickness. He's got the, the the weathered pauldrons. He's got the feathered pauldrons. But what he doesn't have is the ability to take down the one, the only. Sir <laughs> So Yeet. <laughs> he crumbles. <laughs> Next up, ladies and gentlemen. You never know what you got until it's gone. One of the most memorable fights because this was the birthplace of Res. And I'm not talking about Thorn Forge's HQ. I'm talking about the Bell Gargoyles on the rooftop. 3D dimensional shingles. This is where you, you find out what kind of Dark Souls player you are. You could reach in your back pocket and use Golden Pine Resin. Or you can play the game the way Sir So Yeet does. You put the Miyazaki community on your back and you say no resin playthrough, any percentage. This is a very difficult fight. If not for the environment, but for the ball players. You're fighting the first time I believe in Dark Souls where you fight not one, but two individuals. And you get the gargoyle helm if you do it just about right. Very memorable fight. Very, very memorable. It's uh, that that's one that you 
you tell your great grandkids only to be topped by made the quitting point for many people in the Dark Souls community. Myself included, Little Deep Lore, the first time I played Dark Souls, I got to the Capper Demon. And that's when it, it didn't quite click yet. It, to our defense, we weren't playing as Sir So Yeet, but when you fight a nasty enemy in a shoebox environment with a with a tree out of Skokie, Illinois, taking up even more frame perfectity, this is a very memorable and tough fight. You remember it. Because th this is the point where you either check in or check out. You look at Cap or Demon itself. It's got the Texas Longhorns mascot on the top. It's got dual wielding. It's got the rattle take, rattlesnake tail. It's got everything you'd want in a boss fight. And the frustration proof packaging. Like when you open one of those plastic clamshells. But once you get Capra, then you can know it. And last but certainly not least, the number one, second most memorable enemy of all time, Manus. And the very top, he looks like he's doling out cherry pies. He rains death blows upon him. Sometimes this may take you over a hundred plus attempts to beat. But look at him, he's clompy. He's got the blue blueberry gaseous. He's quick. He's got the one arm. He's got Wes Craven. He's got it all going for him here. The question is, when he makes the jump and use the glutes, and you say, well, is he the father of the abyss? But he's got he's got that arm. The, the arm, I think, is, is the difference maker. It, I think he was modeled after the one-armed crabs found on the southern coast of Skokie, Illinois. But he's also, don't, don't overlook the fur tail. You, you, you just never know. But when you beat Manus... You never forget because we all have a boss that trips us up in Dark Souls. And for us, it was Manus. Therefore, he is the number two most memorable Dark Souls boss of all time, ladies and gentlemen. And the number one most memorable boss fight in Dark Souls. How could it be anything other than ONS, Ornstein, and Smog? accounting firm you've got the thin quickness the tenacity of ornstein he's he's just so quick he's got the sauce he's got the red talisman off the helmet he's got the resin and then who could forget smog ladies and gentlemen the thickest golden boy you've ever seen in your life with the hammer proof hammer this is the fight that the, I, I even just just looking at this now just tasting it the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. The goosebumps are rippling. Because you know, if you can handle orange scene and smog, you can handle anything. But it's just a pageantry. You're fighting in a white marble palace. The, the music kicks in. This is, this is what defines pageantry in Dark Souls. When you hit this fight, if you're not, if you're not into the pageantry, you'll never be in it. But when you do it, when you send Smog to its grave, and then you, you follow up a little Ornstein action. Ooh. Oh, yo, I forgot that Ornstein got big. And he's got he's got resin. Man, this this I'll tell you what, it, it's hard to just to not just re revel in this fight. It, it's just this is what to me, this is what Dark Souls is all about. It's the challenge, the pageantry, the difficulty, the memoration, the memorable moments of Ornstein and Smog. It's really set for me, set this game apart from everything else. I'm not saying it ruined all single player experiences, but I'm not not saying that either. But you respect the gold from top to bottom of Ornstein and Smog. That is why they are the number one most memorable Dark Souls boss of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know your top seven most memorable Dark Souls in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Join us live for the Dan Geesling Show at twitch.tv slash Dan Geesling, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for clean, positive gaming entertainment. It's free to watch, so come and hang out while we play games like Escape from Tarkov, Mario Maker 2, and Dark Souls. I'll see you there Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.